Hello again, here we are to continue our discussion of unit tests and making JavaScript libraries and writing JavaScript. In the last video, we talked about the background of unit testing, and we also took a quick look at the sample code that you're going to be working with. In the end, the goal is for you to write your own unit tests for your string library. This example with Fizzbuzz is, you know, for class practice, okay? So, um, so you're going to translate all this to your string library later. But for right now, we'll test with, with Fizzbuzz. So we ran the Fizzbuzz code, and we saw that it returned an object with, you know, um, 100 counts, 27 fizzes, 14 buzzes, and 6 Fizzbuzzes for a count of 100, okay? So how can we write some unit tests to see if our code is working? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to import a, a test runner, right, or a test framework. And we're going to use the Jest test framework for this class, okay? Um, and actually, I have a slide for this, right? Let me present my slides here. So now that we've got the sample code here. Um, so yeah, here we, here's the two files in the program. We talked about that. We ran the code here. Um, and uh, oh yeah, so let's start writing tests with Jest. So the first thing we need to do is we need to initialize your NPM project with npm init-y. So let's go into the terminal and do that. So I'll, I'm in the terminal here, I'll clear it, and I'll say npm init-y. So this is going to create a new package JSON file, and the dash y just says say yes to all the questions. Otherwise, it'll ask us to answer some of the questions along the way. And there we go. So it's just generated a package JSON that looks like this, right? And we can take a look at our package JSON here. Okay. You can see in the script section there's a test, right? So right now it says echo error no test specified. We're going to change that later, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to import Jest. Let me go back to my slides here, right? And um, we're going to install Jest with npm install dash dash save dev Jest. So Jest is the library that we're installing. Dash dash save dev says, let's install this as a dev dependency. So when we install as a dev dependency, it's only used for development, right? So we're saying this library is only used for development. It's not included with the, with the actual program that we might be writing, okay? Or the, you know, published code that we write. So let's go do that. So I'm going to go back to the uh, to the terminal here. Maybe I'll clear the terminal, and we'll do npm install dash dash save wait save dash dev jest. And this will oops wait did I name oh I meant, think I misspelled that. Let's fix the intall. I, I missed the s. There we go. Okay, so this will take a moment. So you just wait for the for Jest to install. Jest is a library that was created at Facebook by the I think it's done by the React team, um, and it's a pretty good no nonsense test library that does a lot of stuff. Um, you know that you'd expect. There's a few other libraries. There's um, Mocha is a popular one, and um, I think there's another one called Jade. Um, so those are popular too, and they're actually a lot of these test libraries. They all look and work almost the same way. I kind of like Jest. Um, I started using it. It's kind of just seems kind of simpler and more to the point, right? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up, actually, we'll just go back to the slides and look at it here. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add the test, um, the test library to our, our script section. So all it needs to say for Jest is to say, you know, Jest here, okay? And we'll just say, hey, use Jest when you run a test, okay? Let's uh, let's take a look now. So I'm going to go into my um, my package JSON in my project, and I'll find the script section, and then I have test here, and I'll just change this to uh, Jest. Okay, great. So we've got that. Save that file. Make sure it's saved, right? And then we'll take a take a look at how to write a test. 
So oh, we actually here, let's run a test. So to run a test, you can say npm run test. You can actually just leave out run, but essentially like when you have scripts in your package JSON, if you say npm run script name, it runs that script. Test is special, you don't even have to say run, you just say npm test, okay? So let's talk about writing tests. So we haven't written any tests yet, so we'll, we'll run those in a minute. You can run a, you can actually run a test now and it'll just say that there's no test to be found. So tests will be written in their own file and you'll write them in JavaScript. And any file that has test in the name will be run by the test runner, okay? So we're gonna create a new file called fizzbuzz.test.js and that will be used to test fizzbuzz, right? So that's a pretty typical naming convention is, you know, we have a file that we write and then we have a test file called .test, okay? Or .test.js, right? So let's do that. Let's make a new file. We'll call it uh, fizzbuzz.test.js, right? And, uh, and then we'll go back to our slides here. And so this is what a test looks like, right? So we write test, and then you give your test a name comma and then a callback right so you put a function in there as a callback and if the callback throws an error the test fails but if nothing happens in the callback or it doesn't throw an error then the test passes right so if we just write an empty test like this the test will pass right so the test result should look like what i have at the bottom so let's give that a, a, a check right so just to make sure the test runner is running we'll do our sanity check test right so let's uh, let's do that now so inside fizzbuzz.test.js i'm going to write test and now you know i noticed vs code it really wants to put test scheduler in here right you know so make sure that it doesn't accidentally type that you know it really wants to code hint you that for some reason so i'm going to do sanity check and then I'll put in my callback here. And you know, you can just put anything here, right? I'll just leave that empty. And there's our test, right? Okay, so let's run the test. So to run the test, I'll clear the terminal here. And to run the test, I'll type npm run test. And then you can see it says jest and it says running and it takes a minute and now it says you know test suites one so i got one test suite that's this file and then number of tests one that's this test here and it passes okay so um let's run a test right so how do we run a t uh, like a real test right so if we want to test something so um, this is in the slides too so you can refer there but i'll just type it in here since we're here now um maybe that's a little, maybe that was too big let's see um so what we're going to do is we're going to use an assertion, right? So an assertion says like, hey, you know, I expect something to be a certain value, right? Like I expect, um, you know, that, that, you know, I need to get up at 8 a.m. Or I expect that tomorrow a package will be delivered. Or I expect that if I dial this number, I will be calling, you know, a certain person, right? So, you know, we can say expect, and then we can put a value here that we're expecting, or we can call a function and maybe be consider ourselves to be using the output of that function as our value, right? But what if I say, I expect two plus two dot to be four, okay? So I expect that, you know, this value here is going to be the value that I put over on this side, right? Let's give it a try. So I'll do npm run test. And then I've got one test and one test is passing, right? Let's try another one. So let's say I expect um, one plus one dot to be three. Right, and in this case, this is not correct. These will not match, right? So let's see what happens, see what the test runner does with that. 
Hmm. So we got an error here. So let's take a look, right? So if I scroll to the top, it says, you know, experimental warning, you know, FS. Actually, we'll just skip over that part. Um, it says sanity check. Took seven milliseconds to run. Sanity check is the name of the current test that's running. Uh, it received um, two, but it expected three. Okay, so it received two, that was the value here, and then it expected to receive three, and so the test failed. Okay, so it's telling me what happened, and then it goes to the test code and it points out exactly where the, the problem was. So something was going wrong here, right? Okay, and then it tells me, you know, one test suite failed, so this test suite failed, and then one of the tests in that test suite failed. Okay, okay, great. So let's um, walk through um, how to set up the FizzBuzz test, okay? So um, I'm going to change this because we expect this to be two, so that one's going to pass now. Let's write a new test. But what I want to do is I want to test one of the FizzBuzz functions. So let, actually, let's take a quick look at FizzBuzz. So I'm looking at FizzBuzz here, and it looks like I have a function called isFizzy. And, you know, I put some documentation here. So is fizzy returns true when n is divisible by, um, by 3, okay? So, you know, parameter n is a number, and it returns a Boolean, which is, represents the fizziness, okay? So I've got is fizzy, it takes in a number, and then it asks the question, hey, is that number, um, if we divided by three, is the remainder zero? So that's what the, the percent sign means. It's the modulus operator. It represents the whole number remainder. So if you take a number here, divide by this value, what's left over is what mod or modulus tells us, right? So if that number is, is zero, then this number is evenly divisible by three. You know, for example, if n was three and we divide by three, then the remainder is zero. This is true, right? Um, if n is six and we divide by three, then the remainder is zero, right? Because it goes in two times and leaves nothing. So this is true. If n was five, then three would divide into five once and leave two left over, and two is not equal to zero. So that would return false, okay? So hopefully this is going <clears> to <throat> determine the fizziness for us. And um, <clears throat> pardon me, let's uh, let's write a test for this. So now this code is all written in the node um, style, right? <clears throat> so it uses module exports, and that means we'll have to require these methods into our program, right? So let's go to our test file. And what we'll do is we'll say const fb equals require, and what I want to do is I want to require the fizzbuzz file. Okay, so that should get this file here. And fb will be an object that has, it's basically the exports object here, and we can see exports has all of these um, properties. Is fizzy, is buzzy, fizzy buzzy, fizzbuzz, fizzbuzz, and fizzbuzz, right? Okay. So now let's try and do a, a test for the isFizzy function. So you could write it this way. You could say test, and then we can say um, is fizzy. And um, now how are we going to test it? Well, let's expect that if we call fb.isFizzy, if we call it with the number three, then I expect that to be true, right? Because we pass a number into is fizzy and it returns a Boolean, true or false, whether that number is evenly divisible by three or not. Okay, so let's give that a try. So I'll, I'll pull up my, my terminal again. Let's clear the terminal and then um, we'll run our test suite. Oh, great. So we got uh, one test suite passed. That's this file. So all the tests in that file are a suite. And then how many tests? Well, two tests passed, right? Let's write another test because maybe 
you know, three always returns true, or maybe the function always returns true, right? Like, what about other numbers? What about if the number's not divisible by three? Like, we can, can we test those things? Let's try it. So I'm gonna um, expect fb dot is fizzy, and then let's try a larger number. Let's try um, 15, right? To be true. And we can we can run that test. Oh great. So we got another test that's passing, right? Or actually it's the same test, but another uh, assertion that's passing, right? Let's try another one. So that that tests a few numbers, right? So three and fifteen, you know, are both divisible by three, and that's working out. Um, let's set up another assertion, right? So let's say fb dot is fizzy um wait oh is fizzy wait is fizzy and let's say what if the number was uh let's try seven right and i expect this to return false so let's save that and um and clear the terminal and run the test again Oh, great. So that one passes too. So in order for this test to pass, all the assertions in here should pass. If any one of these doesn't pass, then we have a problem, right? So for example, if I expected this one to also be true, then that would, you know, if, it, if this returns false, the whole test fails. Okay, so we can try that out. Let's see what it says. So over here it says is fizzy is the test. Um, it received the red value, expected the green value. It expected true, but it received a false. And then it shows me right here where the problem was. Okay. So hopefully that should get you started on testing FizzBuzz. So your goal is to try and test all of these functions here. So is fizzy, is buzzy, fizzy buzzy, and fizzbuzz right? And they're each a little bit tougher to test, right? So, so give each one of those a try. Be sure to read the documentation as you work, right? Because that'll clue you in to what happens. So we can see that, you know, is buzzy takes a number as a parameter, n, right? And then it returns a Boolean. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that gets you started. And then we'll, maybe we'll wrap up in another video, but this hopefully should get you started on writing tests.